Just a quick reminder before we get into the lesson to download the hands-on lab exercises that accompany this complete CCNA course. I'll include the link in the description. Also remember to subscribe and hit the notifications bell so you don't miss any of the lessons in the course. Okay, let's get into it. In this lab, we'll have a look at equal cost multipath with a lab demo. Now to start off, I'll use the same lab again where it's unequal cost paths. So we've got the topology with R4 going down to R1 and the 10.0.1.0 24 network is behind R1. And R4 can get there either via R3 or via R5. And what I've done in the lab already, I've configured all the IP addresses and I've configured RIP on all the routers as well. So to get to the routes behind R1, R4 is going to go via R5 because it's got a lower hop count. It's only two hops via R5, it's three hops via R3. So let's have a look at that in the lab. And if I do a show IP route on R1, actually that's going to show my routes going back to R4. Let's have a look at R4 going to R1. So I'll do a show IP route there. And I can see my route for 10.0.1 is going to go via 10.1.3.2, which is on R5. And I've only got one route to get to 10.0.1 because it's a best path. It's better than the route going through R3. Okay, so that's what happens when we've got this lab topology with unequal cost paths. What happens if I change the lab topology with equal costs? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reconfigure the lab. I'm gonna put in R6 in here. So that way it's going to be three hops, whether we go via R3 or go via R5. Now at first, I'm going to leave the links on R5 as 10 meg compared to 100 meg fast ethernet on all of the other links. And you're going to see the difference that that makes whether we're using RIP or OSPF. So I'll go and reconfigure the lab now. I'll see you back here in a second. Okay, I'm back again, and if we have a look at the old config, you'll see that R5 was directly attached to R1 with its fast 3 slash 0 interface. What I've done is I've put an R6 in there, so fast 3 slash 0 and R5 is now connected to R6, and I've changed the subnet, I've made that a 10.1.4 subnet. And R6, its fast Ethernet 3 slash 0 interface has now got the IP address 10.0.3.2 that used to be on R5. I still have the links on R5 as 10 megabits per second. The links everywhere else are 100 meg. So let's just check the differences that I made in the configuration. So if we have a look at R5, you see I've just changed the IP address on that link to R6. I've put it in the subnet 10.1.4. And on R6, I have configured its IP address on fast 0 slash 0 going back to R5 and I've configured RIP on there. I can actually see I forgot to do something. I also need to go interface fast 3 slash 0 which is connected to R1 and it's going to get IP address 10.0.3.2 with a slash 24. That's the IP address it used to be on R5 and do a no shut on here. Okay, let's just check that RIP is running everywhere. So I'll do a show IP route on R6. Might take a minute for RIP to run on here. Okay, there we go. So there's our RIP routes showing up. So now if we go and have a look on R4. Before R4 just had that one route, to the 10.0.1 network behind R1. Also for the 10.0.2 network behind R1 as well. But I can see it there, so 10.0.1, 
and 10.0.2 there's just one route which is going out the fast ethernet 2 slash 0 interface because it was the best route going down that bottom route via r5 but because i've made those changes now both the top and the bottom path are equal cost they've both got the same hop count which is going to be three hops so if i do a show ip route now the routing protocol should have converged by now and it hasn't yet i can see that i've still got one route okay you know what i'll do to speed things up is i will do a no router rip to disable rip and then i'll enable it again so i'll say router rip and it was for network 10.0.0.0 and let's see if it speeded things up a bit i'll do a show ip route and there's the difference now i can see that for the 10.0.1 network it's now going to go via two paths 10.1.3.2 which is on r5 and 10.1.1.2 which is on r3 so it's going to load balance via both of those routers it's also going to do it for the 10.0.2 network which is also behind r1 on the right okay so that's just configured equal cost multipath for rip let's see what happens if we enable ospf on here now so i'll go to my text file again and I'll paste in a basic config for OSPF. I'll do that on all of my routers. Actually, let me just put in a config T in front of here to save me typing that every time. Okay, so I'll copy this and paste that in on every router. So that's R1, R2, R3, R4, r5 and r6 and let's see if it's converged yet or not so back on r4 i'll do a show ip route and i should see the rip routes being replaced with ospf routes and just come up now on r4 so again you see it does take the routing protocol a little bit of time to converge and there's the other neighbor so if I do a show IP route on here now, I can see that my RIP routes have been replaced with OSPF routes. And you saw for RIP, I had two equal cost paths going through both R3 and R5. But OSPF is just put one route into the routing table for the 10.0.1 and the 10.0.2 networks. So why is that happening? Well, if I go back to the topology diagram, you'll see that the links on either side of R5 are 10 meg. The links along the top path are 100 meg. So these were equal cost when it was with RIP because it just looks at hop count, but OSPF takes bandwidth into account. So the top path is the better path here. That's why it's the one that was installed into the routing table. So if I wanna get equal cost multipath here, what I can do is go on to R5 and make those links 100 megabits per second as well. So let's just check what interfaces they were on. I'll do a show IP interface brief, but on fast 2.0 and 3.0. So I'll go to global configuration, interface fast 2 slash 0, and just to check the correct command, I can do a do show run interface fast 2 slash 0, and I want to do a no, and then in my client here, I can just select the bandwidth, right click, and it will paste it in. So that's gonna remove that manually configured bandwidth, and it's gonna set it back to the default bandwidth of 100 megabits per second. So I need to do that on fast two slash zero, and also an interface fast three slash zero, and I'll put the command in there as well. And I need to do that on the other sides of the link as well. So I'll go over to R4, do a config T, and it's on interface fast two slash zero on this side. Now let's double check it. So I'll do a do show run, interface fast two slash zero. And I can see I've got the lower bandwidth configured there as well. So I'll remove that command to set it back to the default. 
and also on R6, this is on interface 00. zero. So I'll do a do show run interface fast zero slash zero. And I can see the lower bandwidth is configured there as well. I'll remove it there too. Oh, I'm at the uh, wrong prompt there. So I need to go interface fast zero slash zero. And I'll try that again. And there we go. We're done. Okay. So again, we might need to give this a little bit of time to converge. But if I go into R4 now, so before it just had that one route going to the routes behind R1. If we try a show IP route now, yeah, we can see it's converged already. So now because it's two equal cost paths to get to 10.0.1.0, it can go via 10.1.3.2, which is on R5, or 10.1.1.2, which is on R3. And also for 10.0.2.0, also behind R1, it's going to load balance the traffic over those two different paths as well. Okay, so that was a demonstration of our equal cost multipathing. See you in the next lecture. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to get the complete course ad free right now, then you can enroll in my CCNA Gold Bootcamp by clicking the link above my head or in the description. It also includes full study notes, quizzes, and 150 pages of additional troubleshooting labs you can't find anywhere else.